the people that own the city or they are, yeah. would be able to be assessed. Okay, we're out of time, Council. Oh, that matter. Yeah. Wow. Looks fast. Yeah, it does. Okay, let's get Stephanie some feedback, suggestions. I get some feedback from me. I gotta do those 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 appellate cases I gotta get more um, well versed on. I'm just, I'm just disappointed I didn't get the chance to ask you about the 5007.2 challenge, but I'll do that. We'll talk about that. <laughs> um, I thought that you, uh, you, you, you did a great job of, of responding directly to, to many of the questions. Um, I think that you may want to try to not say that's an interesting question, Your Honor, because they all think that question. Um, I understand. I, I think uh, you, you may you may think of employing another uh, another uh, time-saving device that way. I, a lawyer I know who I think of actually is maybe the smartest lawyer I know is sometimes a silent and certainly thinking. And and I don't know that I have the patience to do that that often, but that but, but it can work. Um, I also thought that you kept bringing it around to the the key themes really well, which is this is the purpose of the 21 is approved by the voters, and the whole purpose is to make it harder. Um, which is, is as, as I read the briefs in the case of really the, really is the thrust of it. It, 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 it. it seems to me, an outsider in this, to be your strongest argument, and it's great to keep coming around to it and not uh, let us sidetrack you too much with hypotheticals. You have to respond to them, and you did that too. You didn't, as some, some advocates will try to say, the first thing they will say is, well, that's not in our case, Your Honor, to which an annoying justice will say, well, I know it's not our case. I said it was a hypothetical. Answer it anyway. But, I, but so, so, so I think that to, to respond to the hypothetical and keep bringing it back to, to your themes is, uh, is just fine. Um, I don't usually give uh, any comments about people's demeanor or anything because I think that everyone's style is what they ought to use. So I won't have any comments on that. Um, I think your style is good and, and, and got you know. And I, I love the fact that you're arguing it because it's too often I see these cases where the, t the attorney that worked the case all the way up decides to go hire some hotshot or some whatever else. It, it happens even to us sometimes. Some appellate specialists like these guys. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that you're arguing yourself. I think that's the way to go. You know the case better. And I've seen too many times cases blow up where um, people don't understand the details because because they didn't spend enough money maybe on their appellate counsel to learn more or whatever. Um, I'm glad you had that part. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. They didn't pay us enough, not because they used to. I'll, I'll say one thing. I, I didn't realize when I came here that it was going to be only you presenting. Uh, this is my first time coming to one of these. I actually had a harder and, and better questions for the other side because I think you have a better argument here. But I will say this. Out of the two arguments on the briefing, um, I think that your uh, your first argument uh, that it's you know not a, not a proper subject to a special assessment is a way stronger argument than the proportionality uh, argument. I don't even understand the and I do this. Um, I, I don't understand, uh, and, and, and the briefs to me, and um, all the way through this case, are, are like really lumpy on this. Uh, for instance, the opposing side um, seems to flip flop on this this whole um, assessed value, five thousand dollar assessed value. First they say, you know, that's perfect. You know, that's the right the way, right way to proportion. And then in some reply brief they write, well, you can't do anything about assessed value because that's a Prop 13 issue. Um, I don't, to me, that, that actually is, is, is an important distinction. Um, but this, this assessment, um, when you get to proportionality, and if there's any argument that I see in there, when you get to the proportionality of this assessment, you're talking, first of all, it's a parcel tax. So they're doing it by parcel. They decided to distinguish between one with an improvement on it, one with no improvement on it, and one works at and, and, and something less than 5,000. Well, so fine. So you have a parcel that you subdivided, and all of a sudden you don't need to pay this assessment, even though you have 500 of those all next to each other. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and of course, the assessed value from Prop 13 can be super low, and someone next to it can have no. So, so those, to me, are, are proportionality problems. Um, the rest of this whole um, proportionality stuff, I don't really get. It's too spacey for me. Maybe I need to study the briefs more or something. I just don't get it. I don't get the 
portion of it are, it's on either side. Um, it's, it's just a big blur to me. Um, and I read stuff trying to figure it out. Um, the, the problem is that really there is no way to apportion, and maybe that's why it's so difficult to understand. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I have a hard time with it because I've been in my entire life. So the other thing I think that you'll, you'll need to focus on is this Dom's case. Yes. Um, because your argument on the special assessment is that it can't be a special assessment because it benefits every parcel. And in Dom's, they have a special assessment that benefits every parcel. Um, and it's a service-related assessment, so it's not an improvement-related uh, one. And so I think there's there's got to be a good way to, to distinguish between that and what's going on here. Um, if, 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 if a justice picks up right, a question, that's tough. Yeah, well, well, you know, you, you might be uh, getting to it. A justice might say, are you telling us that we have to overrule Dom's and we can't allow a special business improvement district? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that Dom's case is, and if you know things about business improvement districts, there's two types of business improvement districts. There's ones that go against parcels, and there's ones that go against businesses. In this case, they did it against parcel, but they used business qualities to determine it. So it's a weird kind of a hybrid business improvement district. Normally, the assessment that, that the Dom's case would have done would have been against the businesses itself, not against the parcel. So it's just a weird case. But I, you know, you probably don't have time to explain that to the Supreme Court and to dig into why it's wrong, but there's got to be like, you know, a snappy way to, to, to get right. out of that one. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, you know, from representing taxpayers in these things all the time, what's really going on here is, is they're taking what is clearly a general benefit um, that's been provided for whatever, 40 years or whatever the, the, the stat is on that, and they're doing a study they're, and, and what they're doing is they're attempting to dissect that general benefit and, and, and to show that a portion of it is a special benefit to real property. And that's sort of a scam. Um, I mean, and, and if you, you could figure out, I, mean, I didn't come up with an artful way of saying that, but that's sort of a scam. I mean, you can take any direct benefit. So what are you going to do? You're going to say, the, so in San Francisco, what can the police, what, what should they do with the police? Police is, is another general benefit. Are they going to say that the detective we have on burglaries is we need to, we're going to siphon that person off and all of a sudden charge people that have structures a special benefit assessment of the police to cover the burglary guy. I mean, that's the kind of dissection that's going on in the tax code here. That's offensive. Um, now, I don't know, I, I haven't studied the, the politics of the Supreme Court. I've never run any case before the Supreme Court. But it seems to me that, um, you know, if it, if it makes sense strategically, that that's a real point that people need to understand is that they're dissecting a general thing and trying to pin like this little teeny benefit on a parcel and then all of a sudden they get a 50% vote threshold versus a two-thirds. Um, and, and, and so these people, these, these people in Calaveras County, I mean the other tax that's funding this fire district is a property tax. Okay, so let's be clear, there's a property tax and there is a parcel tax. And that was the question, <laughs> that's why I missed it. And you know what, I, I totally missed that one because what I, that's what I should have said. So if you own property, you're essentially being taxed twice. Right, but they, they did the second one as a special because they knew they couldn't get the two-thirds vote. So let's, let's do a special study. Let's decide how we can justify a special benefit on a parcel by dissecting this thing down to nothing. And then all of a sudden, you know, here's where we're at. So my comments are a little political. They're not the kind of things you would necessarily say to a court. But I think these are like the well, key points. Well, this is a political case. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. Yeah, of know, course. Anyway, and by the way, constructive, I'm, I like constructive criticism. I don't mean wrong. I don't mean wrong. I'm good or so bad. But I mean, you know, let me be a professor. Yeah. Well, I, I, I take kind of a different approach, more tactical. <clears throat> and when you get to the Supreme Court to argue this, they they were written the opinion. And um, I think to make the best use of your time, you have to assume that opinion is against you. And um, I'm, I'm racking my brains to how they could write an opinion against you because I, I think you're right. I mean, I, uh, you know, I think all your arguments are right. And, the, um, and, and I kept thinking, why would they take this case? I mean, the, the Court of Appeal opinion looked to me. Um, and here's the only thought I have. I don't know if this is right. Um, you know, I've been doing these moot courts for quite a while, and a case I had a year or two ago was a case brought by um, the Plastic Bag Coalition, Save the Plastic Bag, against uh, some small community in Southern California which had 
banned plastic bags, and it was a secret challenge in the Environmental Quality Act. And um, it, this was a small community that issued, I don't know, I think it was a negative declaration or something. And um, the plastic bag industry was claiming they hadn't done this study or that study. And, and one of the big issues in the case was, come on, this is a tiny little community. They can't afford to do all that. And, you know, you, you, got, you, you know it's big an industry. It was, you know, Chevron and Shell and all those big oil companies. Um, you can go around picking up, picking off these small communities all over the state. You know, just leave L.A. and San Francisco alone because they're big. And um, it's not right. You know, and the sequel shouldn't be... You know, we got all kinds of communities with different resources, and you should be able to take advantage of that. And this kind of feels the same way. It kind of feels like, um, it, it, you know, you're picking on a little West Point here. I mean, they could, uh, you know, raise 146 grand a year for this, and how much can they afford to pay an engineer? And and, and I'm just, I, I would worry about that. That 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 there's something about this case that makes it very sympathetic to a small community, that concurring opinion tends to support that. And, and that's how they're going to get you. And uh, let me just finish. Um, I, I, I would not open the way you opened about you know, the, uh, the grandeur of Prop 13. Um, it, within two seconds, you're going to get interrupted by Kennard or somebody on something more specific. You know, that they just they don't want to listen to that. You know? so, I, I, I would open. I think this example with the procedure was, was pretty good and where that led. I, I think I would start by saying, look, <clears throat> they've had <clears throat> a fire department in West Point paid for by general property taxes for a while. All they're doing is adding to that fire department. And when the phone rings, there's a fire. The guy answering it is not going to say, um, well, are you on improved property or unimproved property, and which tax did you pay? And I can't go there, and my paycheck comes out of it. No, I think it's not just, just to your point of this is a scam. Exactly. He's just going to say, where is it? That they're going to open out the fire. The I mean, paper it, around exactly. what seems to be a, a, a exactly. principle. Of yeah. Uh, I, I would start with a history with where this thing came from, which was a general fire department paid for by general taxes. It, it wasn't big enough to do the job, and they want another 446 grand to increase it. And it's not going to change the nature of the services one bit. Right. It's still available to everybody. And I, I wouldn't say it's a scam. That's a, well, might be offensive, that's the but, that's, but that's a snare and a delusion. Yeah, I, I, and, uh, and and then you might turn to the, to your example about the procedure. If this was a fire station for a specific property owner. Yeah, maybe that, that would be appropriate. That's not what's going on here. Right. The, the north side of West Point. Yeah. Or, or just the rich people, or whatever. But um, I, I think you got an easy case. But if, if there's something, if they've written an opinion against you, to use that example, I think that hits them between the eyes with uh, how wrong this is. You know, this is the, the guy answering the phone at the fire department. He's sending them out wherever the thing is. So it, it, it's not like a specific fire station or a street lamp. Or it's, it's for everybody. Let me ask you, um, if, if I made that example of, you know, I live in, the, in a nice house that may be 758, so you're going to come to my house rather than go to the be a car accident with the car. I, I don't think you need to get it. It's, um, too, it's too complicated. Okay, and that was I, th I would just simple, simplify it with... Not you, but the guy answering the phone. That's a good point. The guy answering yeah. the phone isn't going to say where you live. Or did you pay the 8750? We'll be right there. Right. He's not going to well, say that. Well, you didn't pay anything? You know right. What? He's not going to say that. He doesn't care. He doesn't right. care if it's a vehicle fire. He right. doesn't care if it's a property fire. They're just going to go and deal with it. And, and his paycheck, he doesn't care if he gets two paychecks or three paychecks. Which maybe he does now. I don't know. Under this thing. He doesn't care. He just puts out the fire. That's okay. I, I, I'll keep it real simple like that because if, if you leave with something else, they're, they're going to interrupt you and you're going to get distracted. I, I wouldn't talk about cases. You don't need to because they can do what they want with the Supreme Court. Right. And that's if they 
have to ask you to answer them, but I would hope they're in case. case. Except their own case. You probably do want to retire. I, I, I don't know, because they're past that. They're, well, they're, they're past their own case. And the point that I was going to make, which of course I never did, which is that Silicon Valley is uh, only four years old, and in order to rule against, rule against us in this case, you kind of have to overrule Silicon Valley. I mean, well, if they've written, written an opinion, they've already done that. They've so got they've they, about it. They did come up with their little uh, Silicon Valley quote in their uh, open brief, which talks about this shared special benefit. Yeah, and I, I need to obviously forget to ask for the no, shared special benefit. Yeah. It's, 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 it all, it's, it's all policy. Yeah. Okay? It's not cases, it's policy. If, they, if they're against you on policy, they wrote an opinion changing that part of Silicon Valley, and you got to talk about it. Well, I think that's an interesting point. You know, the Chief Justice, she's from Sacramento. Like, you know, um, the Chief Justice, she's on the third. And um, she gives uh, speeches, you know, at, uh, our local bar association every so often, and she did for a long time when she was in the third. And she's very, very, very concerned about fiscal, I mean, fiscal issues. It's, it's her job, I and mean, she's looking at the court, she's presiding over all these courts that are just losing money left and right. And that's, I guess, the concern that I have, is that this case, they could, um, I guess, the Supreme Court could say, no, you know what, districts need to raise money. And one of the points I was going to make, and I never did, is you're right, the districts do need to raise money, but guess what? We're all poor here. Taxing people additionally in a way that is, frankly, unconstitutional is simply is not... Well, it's unconstitutional. I, mean, that's, you know, yeah. I, think, I think that that is, that is a, a perfectly reasonable argument to make to this court, which will I mean, they will go, they will interpret statutes and say, even if this isn't a reasonable, even if this isn't the optimal way that this statute ought to work, which they did a few years ago with the, with the statute about reconsideration, that this is the way the legislature said it, so we're going to follow it. I think we're going to do that in spades with a proposition, with this proposition. Um, if this proposition says you can't do it, I think, that, I think this court's going to follow that. With, uh, I think they're not going to look quite as much as as, as Professor Mossman says to, to to policy if they if if they've got us if they've got the the language that says this is the way it goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I totally agree. I am confused as to why they took this case. I have to be honest. It seems pretty yeah. unright to me. And well, it's it's troublesome. It, it should uh, worry you. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it takes four to, to grant, and that's the same number they need to uh, rule against you. Unlike the U.S. Supreme Court, where it takes four, and that's not a majority of grand circuit, so uh, it's troublesome. Uh, unless there's a conflict, you know, and that would have to say a lot of that well. Is there some kind of conflict they want to clear up? You know, that's what I was trying to figure out, honestly, when they took this case, I thought. I mean, out of all the reasons, I mean, I've had a couple of petitions. This wasn't even my petition, it's we had won. But this one, wow. And you know what's funny about this case? I've got to say, this is the teeniest, tiniest little, that Bob Reed is the attorney who tried this case. I did. He called me into the appeal and we looked through the appeal. Bob's like this small town attorney, you know, Calaveras County. And I mean, this is a real small town. Uh, case and it's going to the House Supreme. That's a very interesting situation. Well, don't be surprised if the small town issue comes up in oral argument. Don't yeah, be surprised. Well, I'm going to read that concurring opinion a few times. Yeah. Um, I mean, that is my concern. It was written by the author of the, um, yes. of the opinion Which itself. Which is somewhat unusual. Yeah. Okay, any comments from uh, the other? I have a question about the, the special benefit. Um, is the other party basically arguing that you know the general benefit they have is the existing fire service? And that with this special fee that they charge property owners, that getting that extra firefighter is the special benefit because it you know broadens the amount of fire protective services that the town receives. I mean, that's just where my mind went. Uh -huh. And I was just like, maybe that's the special benefit they're talking about. And that's just kind of a clever political way to get around the, the two-thirds vote. You know, that's a great point. Because how does having that additional firefighter benefit any particular parcel? Well, 
home, you know, you could say, well, with the amount of firefighters we have right now, we can only go to two calls at a time. But adding this this new firefighter, we can go to three calls. So there's a special benefit to whoever that, that third person is. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not directed towards these property owners. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand where the other side, like what their argument is, why it is a special benefit. Well, they're trying to say that what, the, what they say is that a fire at my house is different than a fire at the next house, and if you go put on my fire, that especially benefits me. Yeah. The question that we didn't get to, but that was related to this, is ambulance services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it sure is special and distinct to me whether the ambulance comes uh, to my specific location at my specific time of need to take care of my specific curve, which is very different than the Supreme Court case that we were talking about, which is Silicon Valley versus something open space. Yeah. Uh, where they were talking about parks and open space. Well, yeah, everyone gets to look at the mountains and it's all beautiful, and that's all great, and it's the same for every one of us, no matter where we are, which is very different than if I'm in an accident and, and lying bleeding on the street. Right? That, yeah. seems, that seems a more special benefit. I think that's a strong argument on their and that's part, but I don't think it's strong enough to defeat your position. That's their argument, and the, uh, and the, the counter argument is the one you present, which is read the Constitution, it tells you what a special benefit is, and it doesn't mean it's special to me. Every benefit you receive is special to you. Um, it means it means it's special above and beyond the general benefit that everyone else gets. And here we have every parcel getting the same benefit. And so there's nothing special about any parcel. Right. And maybe I guess touching on what you yeah. said. So we've got this much fire service, and now we're having this much fire service. It's but these parcels are not going to get anything special. See, I, I think we're using the word benefit. The benefit isn't the fireman coming out to put up the fire. The benefit is having it available whenever you need it. That's their benefit. The and that, that, and, that, and, that, and that, that, that's available to everybody. Oh, that part, that, 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 that's absolutely right. So having the 24-7 yeah, possibility exactly. in that. That's what it is. Even, even if there's no fire, the guy doesn't come out of it. He can sleep better at night, knowing that it's always there. Okay, you get less insurance for him. Mm -hmm. That one sort of came out of nowhere. Um, how did I deal with that? It's not the record, you know. But they can get vintage. Yeah. The engineer could have considered that. But they didn't make it. It is right, this four hundred and fifty thousand dollar study during the brain right. forty six thousand. <laughs> okay. Um, good luck, Stephanie. Thank you.
and now it's in the California Supreme Court. Stephanie uh, Finelli represents the group challenging the fee, uh, claiming it's a tax called Concerned Citizens for Responsible Government, and uh, she's suing the West Point Fire Protection District. Uh, on the panel uh, today will be myself, Don Willenberg, who's a appellate specialist, uh, dealing with all sorts of things like I do. And then we got a specialist, Brad Marsh, who knows a lot about uh, these types of issues. So Stephanie's going to argue for 30 minutes. says, you're going to have to leave. 
We've got a huge fire raging down the street. And I say, hold on. The fire raging down the street, the person that owns that property paid nothing. I paid $80.50, $87.58. So you, you have a home at risk and they don't. The fire could easily spread to your property. It could, which is exactly why this is a general benefit. It could spread to anyone's property. People that pay $87.58, people that pay $45, and people that pay nothing. That is why it's well, general. Council, what's really an issue here is a term uh, we used in the Silicon Valley case, shared special benefit, which is not the same as a general benefit. Um, why doesn't this fit into that category? All property owners share the special benefit, which qualifies for calling it an assessment, not a tax. Well, that's an interesting way of phrasing it, Your Honor. They share in a special benefit. If they all share in the benefit, that is a general benefit by definition. So, so we were wrong in Silicon Valley. We should overrule that language. I apologize. Perhaps I misunderstood your question, Your Honor. A shared special benefit is a benefit that benefits a particular parcel of property that's being assessed. Here, the fire suppression is benefiting all parcels of property, whether they were assessed or not. And that is why it cannot, fire suppression by definition, can't be a shared special benefit. I'll give you an example of a shared special benefit. Sewer. The way an assessment works in a, in, in for new sewage, it's, that's exactly what an assessment is for, something like new sewage. Here we have a street with bad sewer. We are going to assess the property owners on that street in proportion to the benefit they receive by putting in a new sewer. It benefits those property owners because now they have new sewage. So I could, so this district could have been properly drawn in your view if it only assessed, well, only properties that uh, actually suffered a fire? No, only properties that could suffer a fire. And since that is all properties, it by definition cannot be a special benefit. So if the fire district says we are going to, we are only going to respond to calls to properties where the assessment was paid, that would be a proper, uh, that would be proper under 218 of your view? The problem with that, Your Honor, is the fire department cannot distinguish between property that has paid the assessment and property that has not. And that is precisely why this particular assessment is unconstitutional. And let me remind the court, we're not simply talking fire suppression. This is also ambulance services. So here we have, for instance... Counsel, I want to get back really quickly. You keep saying that by definition, uh, certain things are not special benefit. Where are you getting your definition of special benefit? The definition, Your Honor, is in Proposition 218. If you look at the definition of a special benefit, that is a particular and distinct benefit over and above general benefits conferred on real property located in the district or to the public at large. Well, isn't, this, isn't this assessment over and above uh, general benefit? I don't believe it is, Your Honor. and I. I I, I don't see how it could possibly be over and above a general benefit. Well, it, it doesn't, there's, there's no assessment on vehicle owners, even though a lot of fires are in vehicles. So in that sense, isn't it a special benefit to property owners, breaking them down by owners of improved and unimproved property? So it, it's not, it, it, even though uh, fires can break out in a lot of places that are not being assessed. Um, why isn't that a special benefit? Because it's not, it's not, vehicle owners are not being assessed. They aren't, and yet they're right. being benefited. And that is exactly the point. Property owners are being benefited, sure. Vehicle owners are being benefited. People who vacation for a day in the West Point Fire Protection District are being benefited. Everyone is being benefited. But aren't, aren't property owners being specially benefited? No, and here's why. There is nothing special over and above 
the West Point Fire Group Protection District is seeking to provide as a result of this assessment. And your argument is based on the fact that every parcel is being protected, is that correct? Every parcel is being protected. So how does this differ from Dom's versus downtown Pomona property and business development district where all the parcels in there were also being specially assessed? So the Court of Appeal held there that, that this was an acceptable special assessment. Because it wasn't a property, strike that, it wasn't a property related service. As I recall in Dom's, that was actually infrastructure that was being put in that particular area and it was benefiting that particular, all of the property in that particular area. So counsel, so you're saying that it's okay under 218 to put in street lights, but it's not okay to put out fires. Isn't that the, 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 the distinct, I mean, I don't know what, that's, that's, that's where we, that's this case versus Dom's versus downtown Pomona. The street light benefits the property around the light, exactly, and that property alone. So if you put in five street lights, the property within that area is benefited. Put in ten, the property within that area is benefited. I live a mile away, I am not benefited at all. And that is the distinction. If I live a mile away from the property owner who paid $87.50 for the fire suppression and I paid zero, I'm still benefited. If I show up on vacation, I get in a car accident, I'm benefited. And the distinction is, and I, I drew this earlier, I'm going to make it maybe a little bit more apparent to the court. Let's say I'm the property owner that paid the $87.58. I have a little fire in my backyard, but there's a major accident involving no one but tourists. No one that owns property, lives on property, or has ever before been to the West Point Fire Protection District in their lives. And they're in a major accident. And I call up and I say, you need to come over and take care of my fire. And they say, we've got a five car pile up involving fatalities from people that don't live here. And I say, hold the horses. They didn't pay a dime. My understanding of the record is West Point is using other funds to pay for the fire protection other than the property owners. They do have other funds. Right. So the issue in this case is only about the assessment to provide fire protection to the property owners. No. Do I have that right? No, the whole point of the assessment is to provide another firefighter. The idea is to have round the clock fire protection. That benefits everybody. That is the entire point. Now, if- Some of the money for fire protection is coming from funds other than this assessment, right? Exactly, because there is already fire suppression. It's not like, and maybe this is the distinction, it's not like West Point has no fire protection whatsoever. They have a fire department, and it does what it can, and it goes where it's needed. And sometimes the needs exceed the fire department's capabilities. That was the problem. Here, West Point Fire Protection District is not seeking to do anything other than expand its already existing services. The services that were being provided before this assessment are the exact services that are going to be provided after the assessment. It's just that they'll be provided better. Counsel, didn't the city of San Diego versus, I'll pronounce it, try to pass Halodnik, hold just the opposite and say that fire suppression services can be the basis of this kind of assessment? I think that's too broad a reading of that case, Your Honor. I think that cases that leave the door open to certain interpretations, I think that's an overbroad interpretation. If you look at what is required in order for an assessment to be constitutional, it's going to be a property-related service. So they were wrong in Halodnik, or they were just spouting dicta or what? Well, that was the holding of the case. You know, I think the point is that, well, this court has no reason to talk about that, first of all, and I believe that that case was wrongly decided. And I think that that's a fairly recent case, if I'm not mistaken, Your Honor. Counsel, that does bring up an interesting point. Both you and the petitioner cite pre-Proposition 218 cases, and I'm wondering what weight you think we ought to give to any of those pre-Prop 218 cases. 
Well, and one of the no I note that the Court of Appeal, in fact, the Third District, in its opinion, cited a couple of pre-Prop 218 cases. And I think the point of those cases is that, you know, Prop 218 did not seek to change the point of Prop 13 so much as it closed a loophole that Prop 13 had unwittingly apparently left open. And so I think to the extent those pre-218 cases are relevant, I think that to the extent they explain the purpose of and the voters' intent in voting for Prop 13, those would be relevant cases to the extent that those cases do not, are not in conformance with Prop 218 for various reasons. I mean, Prop 218 did enact certain additional requirements, and then they're not relevant anymore. And I think this Court may and should, just for clarification purposes, explain that they're simply overruled or superseded by the Prop 218. There was another issue that I saw raised in the briefing, which I was hoping I could get your thoughts on. We're talking here about a special assessment, and the point underlying all this is that, as I understand it, you're arguing that we ought to have a special tax, or they ought to have done a special tax instead. Is it possible to have something that qualifies, a need in the community that qualifies as both something that could be enacted as a special tax and also would be subject to a special assessment, or are these exclusive concepts? I want to make sure I understand your question correctly, Your Honor. Are you asking, could a tax, whether it's called a tax or an assessment, be enacted, and if it just happens to exceed the two-thirds majority, then it's constitutional under Prop 218 as an assessment or as a special tax, even if it was called an assessment? I'm asking, do voters have choices, or do these governing bodies have choices in a matter like this? You're saying that this is absolutely a special tax and is not a special assessment, but could we find that it was both an acceptable subject matter for a special tax and a special assessment? Could you? I'm not sure that you could. I mean, that's an interesting question. I'll be honest, I have not thought of that. I think that off the top of my head, Your Honor, I'm going to have to say no, because a special tax, and not getting into the realm of whether it's a two-thirds majority or a simple majority, a special tax is something that confers a general benefit, and an assessment confers a special benefit. I think that, I think the concern is that most, and the Court of Appeal also found this, most special benefits will also confer a general benefit. Counsel, let me ask you something. Suppose I have a piece of property in West Point area, and I've got a nice home on it that's worth half a million dollars, and my neighbor, the same acreage, has an unimproved property. We both have a fire insurance policy. Now, the fire insurance company is going to take into account how good the fire protection is in the area. Do you think adding this new fireman is going to benefit me more than my neighbor in terms of a decrease in my premium? Well, do I think that? You know, perhaps I might, but, well, that would be speculation, Your Honor, and the fact of the matter is that was never taken into account in the engineer's report. So that's not something that was brought to the attention. I know, but I'm not, I'm just thinking, it's just a hypothetical example that would tend to show that I am getting more benefit if I have an improved property than if I don't have an improved property. And we're both getting more benefit from someone who doesn't own any property, right? I don't know that you are getting more benefit, I suppose, because your property... Well, I mean, there could be a situation, like you say, where there's two fires at once and they don't get to my place, but as a general matter, most of the time, having an extra fireman there means it's less likely that I'm going to use enough to lose my house, right? Whereas the guy next door doesn't have a house, doesn't benefit him as much, and the guy next door who's renting doesn't own any property, he doesn't stand to lose nearly anything. Well, he stands to lose a lot of his personal property. Perhaps, perhaps, but in terms of value, we have those three levels. So in that sense, I'm getting the most special benefit. 
the guy next to me is getting not quite as much. Well, let's assume that's the case. I mean, let's assume for purposes of your hypothetical that there is a some kind of a benefit. One of the other requirements of Prop 218 is a proportionate money. Are you benefiting in the proportion of the additional amount that you're paying? And frankly, there's no way to calculate that. And that certainly isn't anything that was calculated in the engineering report. And in Dobbs versus Pomona, did they calculate the relative benefit of how close you were to the street light or to the streetscape? And was that the basis of the evaluation from the assessment? I don't believe it was, Your Honor. It was probably a pretty flat assessment per parcel, just like this one here, I believe. For the benefit of the panel, it was a three-factor approach to determining the assessment there based on street frontage, proximity to the center, and all the other factors. So it was proximity to the center as opposed to proximity to specific improvements. It was a service. It was another service assessment. And if I recall correctly, one of the benefits that the property owners had in that situation is in terms of there would be less crime, business would be enhanced, et cetera, et cetera. There were a lot of special benefits to that particular area that was being lit up by the street lights. So how should it have been done here? You got $87 for the improved property, $40-something for the unimproved. What's wrong with that? How should it have been done? It shouldn't have been done. That's the point. The idea is that something like fire suppression and ambulance services cannot be the benefit. And in fact, I would request that this court make that determination. Say fire suppression cannot be. Fire suppression and ambulance-related services simply are not the types of services that can be increased by means of a special assessment. I'm going to move into the second issue. Let's assume we rule against you on that issue. Now we're dealing with how you do the assessment. I thought you said there was something wrong with the way it was done. Well, there is something wrong with the way it was done. Well, everything. But let me start with the fact that what the engineer did, and an engineer was not required to do this. I mean, all it was was some math, okay? There was no engineering involved. But what would need to be done is, first of all, the engineer worked backwards and said, okay, it's going to cost $146,000. We're going to need $146,000 additional dollars. How are we going to come up with that? And then did some math and came up with a $45,000 here, $87,000 here. What? $146,000. This court has already been very clear. That's not how we do the assessment. How should he have done it? Well, it's cost prohibitive how he should have done it. If he was really, really going to comply with Prop 218, and this is why fire suppression should not be the subject of an assessment, what he would need to do is go to all the different parcels. And your point, Your Honor, how much are you paying for fire insurance? Well, let's call State Farm and find out. Would it be less if we had another firefighter? How much are you paying for fire insurance? And how much is your property worth? What's in there? And how is a tiny little community like West Point supposed to finance that kind of a survey? I mean, the whole amount of money they want is only $146,000 a year. I don't know how much they paid this engineer, but you don't want to eat up the whole budget with a study and a survey to justify it. You don't, and that's the point. You shouldn't. That's why these things like police protection, fire protection, are all areas that should be funded with special taxes. And it's the burden. This is Prop 218, Your Honor. This is what the voters enacted. Listen, if someone wants to put another initiative on the ballot and say these places are running out of money, we need to get rid of Prop 218, that's a different issue. But this is a constitutional amendment, and this is something that this court, unless the court finds it unconstitutional and it hasn't. Counsel, let's assume it's San Francisco, not Calaveras County. San Francisco is mostly urban, but there's a few parts of it, let's say the Presidio, that are sort of like Calaveras County. Could San Francisco pass a special assessment for fire protection for areas like the Presidio where the fire danger may be higher because of all the eucalyptus trees and assess those owners? I don't think you could. It would have to be a general tax. I think it would have to, Your Honor, and here's why. Yes, it would be a general tax, a special tax. It would be something that would not lend itself to an assessment. Even though people in the Presidio are raising the higher danger of fire and would get the most benefit from the protection. 
much more than somebody living in the original downtown. Well, I guess the question I would come back to is what is the property-related services being given in that particular situation? And so, for instance... It's fire protection mainly for that area because they raise a higher danger of fire and they stand more to lose. Well, and maybe we're... I'll get a little bit back to what I understand in the San Diego case. Are you suggesting, Your Honor, that an assessment to, let's say, put a fire station right near the Presidio and that fire station, the whole point of that fire station is to put out fires in the Presidio. When the call comes in a mile away in an urban area, that fire station says, I'm sorry, that's not what I do. Then perhaps... That would be okay. Perhaps it would, Your Honor. Okay. So because it's Calaveras County and it's mainly a rural area and a lot of it looks like Presidio, it's different. This poor community can't do it, but San Francisco can. Well, you're talking apples and oranges, Your Honor. That's not what... What happened here is not that the West Point Fire Protection District carved out a special area and said, we're going to put a new fire station here and it's only going to serve this area. That's not what happened in this case. There's no new fire station. There's no new supplies. All we have is round-the-clock fire protection, which is what we were seeking, what West Point Fire Protection District was seeking to do. It's not changing any of the services. It's not making any particular area... So they excluded some property owners from this tax slash assessment, right? Yes. So they could have drawn... Could they have drawn a map and said, we are going to offer special fire services to the people in this part of our district and the rest of you, you just get whatever's left over or whatever we can generally get to. It seems to me that you have to be saying that. It seems to me that's what we said in Silicon Valley. If an assessment district is narrowly drawn, the fact that a benefit is conferred throughout the district, throughout the district, does not make it general rather than special. You're right, maybe we can revisit that too, but that seems correct to me. But that's not what happened here, Your Honor. First of all, there was no area carved out. It's the whole district, okay? It's the whole area. And it's the area that was being provided services before this assessment and after this assessment. And to revisit your question, I've got to say, now I have not researched the law on this topic, but I am not sure that an area can carve out special areas and say, you get better fire protection than these other guys. The example, and perhaps this was a bad answer to your question, Your Honor, but the example I gave is if there was a fire department or a fire station that was simply for the Presidio and only the Presidio. For instance, if you've got an airport fire station and it only puts out fires at the airport, not at your house. I know that's a special distinction, but 